As part of module one, it is important to understand the process of culturing microbes in the lab. When culturing microbes, especially bacteria, in the laboratory setting, there are five steps that are generally used. These steps are referred to as the five I's as each step starts with the letter I. The five steps are inoculation, incubation, isolation, inspection, and identification. The first step in cultivating microbes is to obtain a small sample, known as an inoculum, and to introduce it to a new environment which allows the microbe to grow. In the lab, we usually use a medium, such as an auger plate or a broth tube, to grow the microbe. This process is known as inoculation. In the clinical setting, a specimen such as feces, saliva, blood, or other human material may be used to obtain the inoculum. After the medium has been inoculated, we must allow it time to grow or to incubate. Microbes should be incubated at their optimal conditions. Such conditions as temperature, oxygen, etc. need to be considered. After incubating your microbes, the growth you see on the plate or in the broth is known as the culture. Cultures are classified by the number and type of species present. If the culture only has one type of microbe from a known origin, it is called a pure culture. If there are two or more microbes that are identifiable, then it is referred to as a mixed culture. However, if a culture contains unknown or unwanted microbes, it is contaminated. When looking at a culture, Many times you need to separate one of the masses or groups of cells called a colony from the others. This is especially true if you use a human specimen to inoculate the medium, as it will contain many microbes. To separate a colony from a group is called isolation. There are several methods of isolation. The three methods for isolation are the street plate, pore plate, and the spread plate. In all three methods, the purpose is to dilute the sample. You will perform a street plate technique in lab. In this procedure, an inoculum is spread across the plate in three to four sectors. Bacteria are obtained from the previous sector and streaked across the auger, thus diluting the sample. In the pore plate method, a serial dilution method is used by diluting the specimen with each subsequent tube of broth. These tubes are then poured into a petri dish and allowed to cool so the auger will solidify. Colonies will grow throughout and on top of the media. In the spread plate method, a known amount of broth containing the specimen is distributed across an auger plate using a spreader. This dilutes the specimen across the surface of the plate. After incubating your inoculum, you must inspect your cultures. When we inspect, we do so in two ways. First, we must inspect our cultures macroscopically. In other words, using our eyes. We can learn a great deal of information from a macroscopic inspection. In particular, viewing the colonies, morphology, and color help us determine if the culture is pure. If not, we may have to perform one of the isolation methods we just reviewed. When a culture appears macroscopically to contain only the specimens desired, we then must inspect microscopically. In a microscopic inspection, we often fix a sample of specimen onto a glass slide and stain it for better viewing. We view the cells under high magnification using a microscope. In the microscopic inspection process, one is able to distinguish cell shape, size, and other morphological characteristics which help determine the purity of the culture as well as help identify the specimen. This specimen has been prepared using a gram staining technique. As you can see, we have two distinct bacteria one which is spherical in shape and stains purple, the other which is rod shape and stains pink. One can use the information to help determine if the sample needs to be further isolated as well as learn more about the identity of the two bacteria. 
The purpose of the five eyes is to identify the types of microbes that were initially isolated. This is accomplished by gathering data from the inspection process, as well as many other types of assays, such as ELISA's, DNA analysis, chemical tests, and more. From these tests, we can gather information on the metabolic functions, genetics, and more. This will help us to identify the microbe. In review, the five steps for culturing microbes in a lab are Step 1. Inoculation. The process of introducing a microbe to a new environment. Step 2. Incubation. Giving the microbe time to grow. Step 3. Isolation. The process of separating microbes from a mixed population. Step 4. Inspection. The process using both macroscopic and microscopic inspection methods. And finally, step five, identification, which is achieved by gathering the data from numerous assays to help determine the identity of the unknown microbes.